the summer skies in 2020. My name is David Weigel. I'm the Intuitive Planetarium Director at the U.S. Space and Rocket Center, and together let's find out. So we're going to begin by looking in the eastern sky around 9 p.m., and this will be relevant um, in late June into July or so uh, for pretty much most of the United States. And if you're looking in the eastern sky early in the evening, then you should see three very, very prominent bright stars. Uh, this one right in here, Vega, will be the brightest. It is part of the constellation Lyra, as we'll see in a moment. This one in here is known as Altair, part of Aquila the Eagle. And this one is Deneb, part of Cygnus the Swan. And together they make up what's known as the Summer Triangle. Now, the Summer Triangle is not uh, a constellation itself. It's what's known as an asterism. And an asterism is sort of a, a simpler picture in the sky, something that's a little bit more easily recognizable, um, also a little bit less official uh, than a true constellation. Um, but by that nature, it means that you can go outside and make up your own pictures in the sky, your own asterisms, and share those with your family and friends, and uh, me as well. I'd, I'd be very interested to see what pictures you make in the sky. Now, uh, I'll bring up constellations for your reference. And again, you can see that Vega is part of Lyra, the lyre. This is sort of this um, uh, stringed instrument in the night sky. Altair is part of the quill of the eagle. You can see its outstretched wings. And then Cygnus, the swan, uh, is where Deneb resides, and also outstretched wings. And this bird is flying through this sort of plane of the Milky Way in here. Uh, the plane of the Milky Way is something that you really need uh, very dark skies to see. And if you are in the city or even in the suburbs, uh, your likelihood of seeing that is pretty, pretty low. Now, I'd like to also give you a look at um, what these things are supposed to represent. So you can see uh, the swan in here, you can see Aquila the eagle, and uh, typically in my view, um, this is Aquila's head over here. So I'm not really sure what they're what they're getting at in here. And then um, it looks like we have a vulture for Lyra that's holding that uh, stringed instrument, and that's sort of peculiar as well. So um, maybe maybe some comic relief here. Uh, now, if we look towards uh, the south, sort of due south, then you can find the constellation Scorpius, which is one of the few constellations that really looks um, like its name, right? This looks like a scorpion's tail. So we've got sort of its uh, midsection in here, down into the tail with the barb, the pointy barb at the end. And this star in here is bright and red. This is known uh, as Antares. Uh, which is sort of like an anti-Mars, a not-Mars, even though they, they look sort of similar in the sky. But when you can find the constellation Scorpius, you know that you're looking towards the center of our galaxy, um, the Milky Way. So we reside within the Milky Way, and everything that we can see in the night sky, uh, more or less, is within our galaxy. And we are looking at it from inside out because we reside within it. So this is looking directly towards the galactic center right in here, sort of between Scorpius and Sagittarius, who is uh, the archer, but looks rather like a teapot instead. Now, if we uh, move up in the sky, sort of towards uh, zenith and north, zenith is directly above your head, uh, and north is north, uh, we can find the constellation Ursa Major, the Great Bear, and perhaps more recognizably, uh, the asterism that resides within it, which is its backside and tail, this is known as the Big Dipper. So the Big Dipper is uh, probably the most recognizable seven stars in the night sky, and if we use the handle of the Big Dipper, then we can find a couple other constellations. So we can arc down to Arcturus, which is a nice bright red star. This is part of Boötis, the herdsman who looks like a kite and sounds like he should be named Booties or Boots, but it's Boötis. Um, and then if we've arced to Arcturus, we can continue on that same curvature, arc to Arcturus, and then spike down to Spica, which is a very uh, blue star in stark contrast to Arcturus, which is a red star. And that color is based on their temperature. So redder stars are going to be cooler, and bluer stars are going to be 
Uh, and yes, that does sound maybe that uh, that's backwards, but um, hotter things are actually um, bluer in this case, and in all cases. So if you ever think of a, a, a blue flame, that's a very, very hot flame. So Spica is part of Virgo, the young maiden, who is laying here on, your si on her side, and you can see a head, and arms, and legs. Uh, very obvious. Maybe something along those lines. You can see Boatus in here, and Ursa Major right in here. Now, uh, constellations and asterisms are very fun to find, and stars are fun to find, uh, but there's plenty more in the night sky uh, that you can find as well, especially if you have a small telescope, or a big telescope if you have that. Um, and one of those things is the Whirlpool Galaxy, also known as M51. Uh, so this is a, an image that I've overlaid uh, from the Hubble Space Telescope. So this is sort of our, our background imagery. This is a good bit better. Um, again, this is known as the Whirlpool Galaxy, and it's a galaxy very similar to our own galaxy, the Milky Way. It is a spiral galaxy. You can see very distinct spirals, and uh, the sort of dark brown is going to be heavy concentrations of gas and dust. Uh, the reddish areas next to this uh, gas and dust are going to be star forming regions uh, that are in the process of forming these brand new stars. The new stars themselves in this picture are the very uh, blue, bright blue ones. These are uh, very young and very hot. And then older stars are going to be these uh, bright yellowish ones. And you can see that there is a lot more yellow in the center. Older stars typically reside in the center of galaxies. And uh, you'll notice this sort of uh, blob over here to the side that doesn't seem to fit. Uh, this is actually a separate galaxy. And it's one that is uh, getting gravitationally ripped apart by the Whirlpool Galaxy, which sounds kind of violent. It is, and it's also very exciting. Uh, so these stars are going to merge with these stars, and these galaxies are going to basically um, come together. And um, this one, being a good bit smaller, is going to get consumed, essentially, um, enveloped by the Whirlpool Galaxy, and uh, all of these stars will become part of this one over a substantial period of time you know, in the, the millions of years range. So uh, how do you explore further? Well, there is no substitute for going outside and simply looking up and trying to find these things on your own. If you need help, you can come visit me at the Intuitive Planetarium at the U.S. Space and Rocket Center. We are now reopened on Friday evenings uh, at 7 p.m. Uh, for a variety of different uh, programs uh, to teach you about astronomy in the night sky. And uh, to explore on your own, you can go use the same software that I'm using right now uh, called Worldwide Telescope and go to worldwidetelescope.org. Uh, and explore further, and all you need is uh, a device that, connect, that can connect to the internet, and you can explore to your heart's content. So uh, with that, thank you, and keep looking up.